The Rofo Rofo fight and apologies to late Afrobeat legend Felani Kulakokuti in the Temple of Justice in Nigeria is attracting scrutiny from various quarters. The Senate and the Nigerian Bar Association, NBA, have waded into the conflict between the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Tanko Muhammad, and 14 justices of the Supreme Court over issues bordering on welfare and working condition. While the President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, mandated the Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters to wade into the crisis, the NBA called for fundamental reforms in the administration and governance of the judiciary. In a statement, the NBA president, Olumide Afata, lamented that the situation is affecting judicial responsibilities of the justices and justice administration process. Uh, okay, so in, this is Justice Tanko Mohammed versus other mm. justices yeah. of the Supreme Court. Now, this resolution by the, the Senate, what would it do? Of what impact Where? would it have? I think is what happened was quite uh, strange because um, judges at that level, at the APS court, are not, are not traditionally known to be involved in uh, activism. Okay. But for 14 out of about 16 judges to come up and write such a memo, I think it's a reflection of the height of frustration of the judges. And if you look at the issues that they raised, they are fundamental issues. Some that were appointed two years ago, up to now, they don't have accommodation. They don't have research assistance. And they are confronted with uh, a collective supply of uh, electricity. electricity. And then um, we can understand you know, ordinary men like us. But people who are at that level, they deserve the comfort so that they can avoid, they, cannot be, they will not be lured by temptation. Absolutely. Because when people at that level have to depend on other means of survival, it's going to affect the administration of justice. It's going to affect people's access to the judiciary as the last hope of the common man. So I think in the past, in the last 60 years of, uh, you know, uh, that we have running Supreme Court, I don't think we've had that kind of uh, situation. And for that letter to be made, you know, to, to come into public knowledge, uh, shows that the judges, you know, they, they were the, you know, at wit's end. Probably they have explored other means without success. But I think if you also look at the other side, the CJ said something. He said he raised the issue of finance and also said environmental factors that we, judges cannot operate outside the context of the environment. But whatever is the case, I think the, there must be a solution to this problem. Uh, it has been brought into public domain. And I think our position should be that the Senate should do something urgent. And if judges at the Supreme Court can be complaining, then that gives you, you know, a, a depression of what the High Court judges are going through. Magistrates, you know, at the state level, what they are going through. Because I've had experiences, kind of encounters with a lot of judges. And what they tell you about their situation, you know, I think is quite unfortunate. I hope that for the sake of sustaining democracy and for the sake of uh, ensuring the integrity of the judiciary, uh, the Senate has to do something very urgent. And not just about the Supreme Court judges. A P court is there. I court judges. This should be this is a kind of wake up call. And I hope the Senate will not we go beyond that and look do a kind of auditing, needs assessment, you know, across the states, so that you know we don't have a situation where you know, other judges, you know, we also follow the same pattern. I think it's quite embarrassing. I would hope that something again to be done. All right, Olabisi, let me come to you. NBA has asked for fundamental reforms and accountability for a truly independent judiciary. How do we achieve this? Well, uh, for me, uh, uh, I want to query the level of transparency in the judicial system. And, um, you know, uh, I know that that... Uh, at that level of our judicial system, we always talk about the we always talk about autonomy. Okay. So how autonomous are these people? Because I know that uh, their budgetary allocation is outside government. They get it; it's a direct line allocation. Now, how transparent are they? with this budgetary allocation. 
if you look at the allocation, for example, you find out that there is nothing indicating what should be spent on what. Between 2018 and 2021, the judiciary got uh, about 110 billion naira per annum. But that is just it. It's just a bogus allocation. You don't know what that allocation is meant for. Oh. Yeah, and we need transparency. We need to know what this money is meant for. If, if we have such transparency, which is what NBA is advocating okay. for, our uh, justices will not go to town to complain about things because they will have known that this is the amount that is available, this is this what is, is being expended, with. and this is what we can work with. As a matter of fact, the CGM will not need to remind them of any environmental factor because they will also understand those environmental factors. And also remember that they did not just stop at all this lack of data, lack of this and that. They also said some things about the chief justice, justice taking some of his children on trips and then uh, giving them maybe, uh, if he allows them to go on any trip abroad at all, dubious trips, so yeah. to say. So we will know, is it right for any CJN to take his children along on foreign trips or whatever? There are many aids does the CJN, the CJN have to take when he's going on any trip and all of that. You know, I think the problem has to do more with transparency and accountability. Until we get to that point, it, it will be possible for individuals to just do whatever they like with public offices. And I'm not even saying that the CJN is corrupt or anything, but it just gives room for, um, for people to just imagine, uh, to imagine things and to allege things that may not necessarily be. So let us have transparency. Let us have uh, autonomy in the true sense of judicial autonomy. Then we can move on from there. All right. Uh, before we move on to other discussions, Bikio, if the Supreme Court justices are complaining about basic things like this, has it gotten that terrible? Yes, it just shows uh, <clears throat> that things have become so bad in our country. And it says a lot about the leadership qualities or lack of it of uh, Justice Tanko. If uh, 14 out of 17 judges can rise up against you to complain about the way you run the Supreme Court, then it shows that you have lost the, 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 the control of the court in the real sense of the word. Because what these judges did um, is unheard of. But it's difficult to blame them because they had a meeting with the CJN on March 23. And all of the issues that they complain about have still not been addressed. So no one should then be surprised that they've had to come out because they just felt that things should not continue in this way. If you needed 22 judges to effectively run the Supreme Court, and you have 15 currently working their, I mean, soiling their hands, working hard, it shows that they are clearly, the Supreme Court is clearly understaffed. Mm -hmm. And we know that from time, these judges get overworked. So, for us uh, to look at this, I, I, will, I will encourage the Senate to look into this manner, into this matter. If there are issues of lack of transparency, because I could see even from the response of the CJN that it, it didn't deny some of those allegations. For example, if they are complaining that they have uh, bad vehicles, it tried to deflect the blame elsewhere. So, People who do not, that we do not want to see collect bribes, we got to take better care of them. Judges should earn better pay. There are people heading agencies in our country today who are earning 10 times the wages of judges. Mm. This, this shouldn't be happening. Yet we will not want them 
to take bribes. So there's a need to look thoroughly at this problem and come up with reforms that would deliver the, the Supreme Court of our, our dream to us. This is an eye opener, but thank God it is not worse than this because if the judges had come out like union, union uh, members and decided to protest publicly, honestly, we won't be talking uh, in the way we are talking now. It will, it will have been a lot worse for everyone. But hopefully this matter can be resolved. The executive house will also get involved. They must provide the funding that the judges need desperately. You can't tell judges that they, they cannot, that they can only have access to electricity between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. What if they need to work extra hours? These are people who write judgments sometimes up to 100 pages, mm. and they, they cannot sit in the offices beyond uh, 4 p.m. Mm. I mean, it's, it's just uh, terrible. The executive does not suffer in that manner. If the executive wants to stay in the offices up to midnight, they are afforded all that they need to remain in the office. They are afforded that comfort. They are afforded access to this room and all that. Mm. This is um, the, the judiciary is an independent arm of government. Whatever the, the executive enjoys, they should also enjoy. Otherwise, it's not worth it.